There you have it. Next question. Okay. You indicated your best recollection was that your relationship with Mr. Wade, the romantic relationship, uh, ended, um, you left it in August of 2023. That sound right? That's the hard conversation. That's not the... Uh... We've covered this. Next question. And you characterized it as a tough conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to get into the conversation per se. Well, if he doesn't want to, we won't go there. So, Mr. Sado, next question. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to say no when you've got that opportunity. But... Here, the okay. physical relationship ended pre-indictment. And is that when you were talking about the tough conversation? But with... I, I, the, I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after, but the physical relationship, so I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male, he would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that like hard conversation. That's, I just think women and men think differently. And I think... What's up, YouTube? It is your boy once again with another episode of Fuller. Let's jump on it, people. Fonnie Willis. Oh, my goodness. There's so much going on with this stuff with her. I wish. I wish somebody would really just like sit down with her and calm her down a little bit and stop giving the people what they are asking for. And y'all, some of you don't know what I'm talking about is when she went into the courtroom when she wasn't supposed to, she came in there hot, mad, showed it all in her body display, some of the things she said. And they're looking to damage your character. So that's why like, I always tell my wife and all her, her sisters and everything, stop approaching things with your feelings. Because people don't care about your feelings. They're going to care about the facts and how you represent that. They don't care about your feelings. So this is what she is doing. She, she came on there and gave away a lot of stuff that she shouldn't have to give. So we're going to kick it off. I'm going to show some stuff. Like I said, I'm not going to bash her and all this. Y'all going to think bash the black woman. I'm just going to go off what, what I see and what is really going on. All right? Now, if some stuff gets said, stuff gets said. I mean, she's human. Why not? You know, people say shit to me. But let's get it popping on this, man. Now, I'm going to show y'all how she came in hot, what I was talking about. All right? And then we're going to go about some couple comments that some other people said. So before we kick it off, y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe, like, share. Definitely hit that notification bell to what? To get the next video. Now with all that being said, let's get it. Bonnie Willis on the stand, a district attorney of Fulton County, taking the stand as a witness in the case that she is prosecuting, but of course, only within the framing of the pending motion to disqualify her. She came in hot. She was angry and she wanted the opportunity to clear her name. In fact, she announced before she took the stand that she was waiving any objections to the subpoena that had been served on her to testify today. But what was more important than her demeanor was what she said under oath, under penalties of perjury, and what Nathan Wade said also under penalties of perjury. Remember, these are both members of the Georgia Bar. They're practicing attorneys. They have a lot at stake if they are found not to have told the truth to the court. But they both said that a personal relationship did not begin until after Nathan Wade was appointed special prosecutor in and around March slash April of 2022. He was appointed in November of 2021. There was a lot of personal information, frankly, unnecessary personal information that was brought out and drawn out when they were on the stand. OK, so this is what I'm talking about right here. You see how she went in there? She had the, the angry walk, you know, stomping hard, stepping hard. Flopped down in the seat, body leaned over, threw the paper on the ground, I mean on the table. And see, some things were said. Now, she didn't say anything out of the way, but she asked for some things. And then 
the lady asked her, like, why is she here? She's like, well, I seen it on the TV in the room, and I was in there pacing. So as soon as she got a chance, she came out. She wasn't supposed to be out there. So, like the woman said, when she came out, she brought out a lot of unnecessary stuff. Once she said it, said. So, you know, I was about the money. Um, like, she was talking about the man, and you a man, you understand man, woman different. I, like, look, a lot of stuff makes you think, like, what, you got a problem with men or something? And they're going to frame it that way. I guarantee you these white men are going to frame it that way because who are they representing? Someone who has a fan base that is 99.97% white. So, yes, they're going to look at ways to like, oh, you got a problem with this because of this. You know what I'm saying? So, but a lot of women going to be on her side. Don't get me wrong. They're going to be on her side and clap for her, but that's not going to do it, man. It's not going to do it. But let's, let's check out some more, see what else. And you can have this discussion, right? Did she make a, a bad decision, raise questions by having a relationship with Nathan Wade? But from what you saw and heard on the stand yesterday, is she being held to a different standard? I believe she absolutely is. And look, Chris, you are right. You can debate the ethics of hiring someone or beginning a relation with someone, a relationship with someone after you hired them, particularly in a case as high profile, as important and as important as that. But it's also important to note under Georgia law and procedures, there is no prohibition about having a relationship within a prosecutor's office. There are people that can be married within a prosecutor's office under Georgia law and other places it is different. So that is why this case is being stretched to somehow claim that there was a financial gain to be made by District Attorney Willis from this arrangement. And, and the reason that we're talking here is because she gave such force, forceful and credible testimony that that was not the case. Okay, so you see how this young lady is trying to frame it, all right? And she's correct. It is not against the law to have a relationship um, within their office in Georgia. It's not. It's an ethics issue for yourself. You know the old saying, you don't shit where you eat? There's a reason for that. Because when you split up or something go down, they gonna pull this relationship. But, oh, y'all got a relationship? And as Fani stated, uh, her team, nobody knew that they had a relationship. So they probably was creeping around. People I had you know, suspected, but she said she didn't tell them. So, no. Yeah, she made a big mistake by having this relationship with him. It seemed like she was like, like really into him, but like he treated her like crap. And from some of the things she said, you know, when she was saying how he told her that the only thing a woman can do for him is make a sandwich. My question to her is, why the F didn't you leave after he told you that? Not start going Dutch. <laughs> you should have left. But listen to this young lady, and this is how she's going to frame all this stuff. And I'm going to come back. Watch. She presented herself as a strong black woman who was taught by her father to pay her own way. That is something that resonates with a lot of people, including me. My parents told me, they used different wording, they said, always have your own. And I always have to this day. And, and that is something that is resonating with people. I highly doubt that this line of questioning, particularly the salacious details about their relationship, would have been brought forth had she been of a different gender and race. Okay, so y'all see what she said. Now, I'll be honest. The strong black woman comment, I would have left it out. Because every black woman uses that. I don't care if they are at the top of their game or at the lowest of their game. Every black woman think they're a strong black woman. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't lost the validity to everybody else except them. They don't realize it, but it has. Because most time y'all with a bunch of things like, well, I'm a strong black woman, it just lose the conversation right there. Like, oh, okay, here we go. All right. But then she go to say if because of her race and gender, she's being attacked. I'm going to disagree again because of who is she's going after. You're going after the ex-president Trump. 
Trump has a fan base of what predominantly white people. They don't care what color you are. If you go after Trump, they coming for you. Look at all these white people they done sent to their houses. I mean, they attacked the whole doggone capital. So it don't have anything. It's going to be a little harder because you are. But our black people, if we are so strong and proud and all this and this, I don't see no black groups coming out here to protect this woman. Where are they? Where's all this, these groups and committees and all these people? What about these women? Where, where, where is everyone to step up and crowd around this woman and protect this woman? But everybody get online and say something, but I don't see it. She's traveling with a security team fearing for her life. Where, where everybody at? That's what I'm saying. All right, let's listen to some more, man. I'm going to try to ram too much. Well, if he doesn't want to, we won't go there. So, Mr. Sadow, next question. You know, it's kind of hard to say no when you've got that opportunity. But all I'm going to say is it was it pre-indictment in this case. So we know the timeline that the indictment was delivered. Okay. Well, but, actually, and, and, and so that so we're clear, the okay. physical relationship ended pre-indictment. And is that when you were talking about the tough conversation? But was, I, the, I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after, but the physical relationship. So I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male, he would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that like hard conversation. That's I just think women and men think differently. And I think the answer, Mr. Sadow, to your question was she's not sure whether it was before or after the indictment. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure that that was her answer, but let's see if I can get specific. That is what I said. That's what I said. I'll let you. Next question, Mr. Sadow. If you need to clarify. Want to say one more? One. The romantic relationship ended before the indictment was returned. Yes or no? To a man, yes. Well, to a man, yes. To you, no. She, she's explained this, Mr. Sadow. She's explained this. <laughs> now. Look at the body language and what she said. He asked her a question. Basically, when the relationship end? Did it end before or after the indictment? To a man, it did. What does that mean? You see how I'm saying how they're going to come out that you have a problem with men? Because you didn't say to him, Mr. Wade, you said to a man. And that's why he kept repeating like to a man. Yeah, to a man, it was over. But to me, no, to a man, it wasn't. But to me, it was. That was she trying to say. Now, imagine if that was a man sitting in her seat and a woman was questioning him. And she asked him, so uh, if it's to say, Mr. Wade, did you um, end the relationship? Was the relationship ended before or after the indictment? And he would have responded with, <laughs> well, for a woman, yeah, but to me it was. Every female would have been with the, the narcissist, misogynist, a-hole, he ain't this, dusty, all kind of stuff would have been said. If a man would even came close to saying something like that, a woman thinks different than a man. So to her, it probably wasn't, but to me, this shit was over. Just y'all hearing me say it probably make y'all mad. Let's be real. But she wouldn't say, Mr. Wade. She would have been better off saying that than saying to the man, well, you know, men think differently. How are you now telling men what they think? That's how they're gonna, that's how they're gonna play it. You see what I'm saying? She played right into that as having an issue with men. You see what I'm saying? Because she's she's in her feelings right now because Wade had already gone up there. So maybe something Wade has already said that ticked her off. And then with other people talking, that lady probably spoke, you know, her room, not roommate, but the lady had the condo. So she's hot. They done told stuff. But you, you can't go in like that. You got to gotta kick back, man. You Anyhow, there you have it. Next question. Okay. 
you indicated your best recollection was that your relationship with Mr. Wade, the romantic relationship, uh, ended, um, you left it at August of 2023. That sound right? That's the hard conversation. That's not the... Uh... We've covered this. Next question. And you characterized it as a tough conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to get into the conversation per we se. We should. Mr. Let's go on and have the conversation. Hmm. I'm just asking you whether or not it was a coincidence. It had absolutely or... nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. Hmm. We have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Okay, so she definitely, you see what I'm saying? She's speaking personally. Um, you're not, it's not going to resonate with a lot of people. Not the people that's going to make the decision. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, some black women definitely going to, black people understand where she's coming from. She's raised by her father, evidently, from a long time. Um, strong black woman, as they say. Um, but it it's not going to resonate with the people who's going to make the decision on this case. Because you're trying to prove that it had the relationship didn't have no uh, conflict with the case, but it is. I don't care how they look at it. It's going to be because the man that you were dating, you gave the contract to, and now he's like your head prosecutor. You see how it's going to look? It's going to look like a conflict of interest, regardless how she tried to defend it. I would just, just defend it as best like, and then she made a comment earlier about he wasn't even her first choice. So why did you hire him? You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that can come back, but she's, like the woman said, she's giving up too much information. Anything else you would like to add to that? No. Sure. But I'm sure we'll talk about it further. No, we're not going to talk about it further. I, All right, no back and forth, Mr. Sadow. Next question. It's something that I would, that has to do with the, what I've characterized as the church speech. Let me just tell you what the question is, because I know that's not something. Preserve it for the record. Huh? You can preserve the question for the record, but we'll, then we'll move on. That's correct. Thank you. When you gave what I've referred to as the Martin Luther King weekend church speech. You a great honor of mine. That's a historic African-American church. Yes, I do. Okay. Did she have notes on the speech? Did she read the speech? Um, when did she do this? When did she write the speech? Who was she referring to when she was talking about... Um, others, who was she referring to when she said they, who she was referring to when she spoke in terms of their, that is. Their, I would their... love to answer those questions. Well, Ms. Willis, uh, you could certainly do that in some other format, but for today, that's uh, what we decided we're not going to cover. Who was she talking about that was playing the race card and why she didn't tell the people at the church that she was, that she had had a personal slash romantic relationship with the I'll do respect the way it was characterized, the black man that she was referring to, and was the black man she refer, referring to area of inquiry. Noted for the record, Mr. Say Down. Next topic. Okay, so if you hadn't, you need to go back and listen to the MLK speech she gave at this church. Um, she started out talking about MLK and her father. Father met him and all this stuff, and then she jumped on this trial stuff. And she went a long period talking about certain things with this, what's going on with this trial. And at certain points, she talked about Mr. Wade and like, um, not in a bad way. Now, she was like, he's a great man. He's this and this. And they're attacking the only man of color on her team and all this other stuff. And she framed like it, like it was a racial thing. And so I'm looking at this. I was like, well, the only reason they come after him it wasn't his color. It's because he's the only one having sex. That's why he's coming at, they're coming at him. 
The other ones don't have a relationship with you. Or like you say, a personal relationship with you like that. So to try to make it seem that way, that's why he was asking those questions like who they, what are you talking about? The, you know, the, the racial card type stuff. Because she was doing a lot of insinuating. But she went a long time. And I was like, well, dog, this is an MLK speech or is her speech? And then she came back, you know. But, you know, the church was in there. But again, she did not say she had a relationship with this man who was still married. Separated, whatever, they were still married on paper. And that's what we got to start paying attention to, people. Don't get involved. They ain't got it done, man. Don't that you testified that you have no records um, that with regard to cash payments. Yes, correct? Mm -hmm. Would your bank records reflect that you withdrew cash from your bank accounts during the time period of 2020, 2021, 2022, or 2023? I'm not asking you, I'm just asking whether they would reflect that you withdrew cash from any of your bank accounts. Uh, so the exact amounts? No, that, that, but yeah, of course, I, of course, I withdrew money throughout that time period, throughout my life. I've I withdrawn money from the bank. Yes, of course. Talking about cash from, that is, that you go to a cash, bank right. or you go to an ATM cash. and you take cash out. Either that way, or you go to Publix and you overpay, or you go to another store and you overpay. So yes, both through that, yes, uh, of course they would reflect that at times. Okay, and so those records, if we had them, would show that, correct? That throughout the course of my life, I took no, no, out money. From, I, I was very specific. I said, yes, during the course of that time period, I would have taken money out. Yes. So, do you have a problem with? Re I absolutely. So, yes. You don't want the bank records to be made available I, for the court and the court alone. I'm gonna object this to the relevance and this has already been addressed earlier as it relates to other records. This is an improper line of question. Okay, so here is the incompetence on the lawyers right here. You, you're trying to ask someone to go back three years and see if there's a withdrawal in your checking account for what? You're gonna show money use the card, withdraw, you're going to see all kind of stuff. That don't mean she pulled enough out to pay him back or whatever. Because you don't know what the money is going for. So, yeah, I'll be in agreement with her to like, no, we're not going to put my checking, my, my bank statements on trial. We're not doing that. And that's where he was leading to. So I'm glad, like, the judge cut that off or whoever cut it off. Like, no, we're not doing that. That was just stupid. That was very immature of him to try to insinuate we get those, you know, banking records. It's not, it's not that damn serious. Like, you're not going to find it that way. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis coming under fire for alleged misconduct. A new court filing shows the lead prosecutor in Trump's Georgia election interference case, Nathan Wade, bought flights for himself and Willis on two occasions creating more buzz around their affair allegations. Madison Scarpino is live in Atlanta with the latest. This is really getting ugly, Madison. Yeah, Griff, some new revelations linking DA Fonnie Willis and her special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, as lovers. In a court filing on Friday, the lawyers for Wade's estranged wife provided credit card statements that show purchases for both Wade and Willis. Now, there's plane tickets to Miami for the two of them in October 2022 flights to San Francisco in their name in April 2023, as well as cruises, hotel stays, and flowers. See, and this is why you don't get involved with people that are still married, that hadn't got the divorce. Because as soon as they find out you seeing somebody or was seeing somebody for a certain amount of time, they're like, oh, so you are seeing them. Even though his wife admitted to having an affair sometime in that relationship, now she got something against him now. So she's providing information. You know, at first, their, their divorce going to be sealed two years in the making. She didn't want anything. Now she probably looking at, oh, okay, so this, this fool was messing with her. So you were messing with my husband the whole time. No wonder you acting weird. You see what I'm saying? They try to pin something back on you. That's why you don't mess with people that are still married, regardless. You know, it's... It just doesn't work out. But either way, 
um, what's his name? Uh, I got him right here. Robert Govey, Esquire. I had, I was trying to find these records, but he had them. So I'm going to give him the credit on this. Robert, I hope I say his name right. Govey, Govey, Govea, Esquire. But he found them. So we're going to look at what he found on these uh, ticket, this credit card uh, bill. So she hires her lover, pays him the money, he bills it as legal work, and they go on the trips. Now here are true and accurate copies of credit card statements that shows the purchase of these plane tickets. Maybe Fanny should be indicted for fraud. So here are some of the transactions. Let's take a look. This came from Nathan Wade's credit cards, Capital One Business. This was from April to May of 2023. And remember, Trump had not been indicted yet. Trump got indicted in August. So what are these two doing? Oh, he had to pay his bar dues. Ugh, oh, hate having to pay those every year, hundred of dollars. He went to Framebridge, whatever that is, $300 there. Then, oh, look at this. We have a Delta airline hmm. from Atlanta, Georgia. Destination. Oh, yeah. This one, origin, destination from Atlanta to San Francisco. Hmm. SFO, San Francisco. Maybe they're going to Napa Valley. We don't know. But this is Nathan Wade's name, a Delta airline ticket, April 27th. Look who's right under that. Fanny Willis. She's going to San Francisco too. Isn't that nice? Now, apparently they might've had a bug problem. Here was another flight. Oh, he's ordering flowers. I guess those flowers are probably not for his wife. Comcast cable bill comes out. Then they show up in Doubletree, Napa Valley. Isn't that beautiful? Now, do we have time? When were they coming home on this? We don't know. So lots of Ubers, probably still, right? They travel there. They meet with maybe pencil neck shift, whatever, who knows? Then they've got some Ubers and some wine just to ride out the trip. Here's some more. This one, some more Delta Airlines, Uber, Target, Rum Runners, Freeport, Rum Runners Freeport, Norwegian Sky, whatever that is, shopping at Kroger, going to Macy's. Here's some more stuff. Trips to Uber, Hyatt. Oh, a Norwegian cruise line. How much is that one? $3,000. Yeah, that's an expensive one. That's that Trump money, man. And they're staying at the Hyatt Regency in Aruba and all the Ubers. And so is there plane records for that one? <laughs> Too funny. I can't even take it. All right. So look what they did. Hey, honey, what do you want to do? You want to go on a cruise? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, I'm going to get two tickets. That one's 1300 bucks. That one's 1200 bucks. Couple tickets for this one. October 5th, Royal Caribbean Cruise. Royal Caribbean Cruise. Now this one, we got some airline. We got some tickets. We got three tickets here though. So who is this person? Clara Bowman. She's going, yeah, they're all flying. No, that's a separate location, I think. So this one's going from Miami to Dallas, Fort Worth. What's IAH? So I think this person's traveling separately. I don't think this person's going on the cruise. So Bowman Clara's ending up in Miami. Traveling around from IAH. What is IAH? IAH is Houston. Okay, so that's Bush, Bush Airport in Houston. So originating and then going. So this person's traveling around. Now this is Nathan Wade and this is Fanny Willis, Houston. So Fanny and Nathan look like they are getting on the cruises. And I don't know who this Clara Bowman is, but maybe an assistant, somebody else are just flying around. Okay, my alternate explanation is that Nathan, okay, one of these tickets is for Clara Bowman, who is another woman. I don't know who that is. Definitely not his wife. And then one of these tickets is for Nathan, right? Like that's maybe one was for him and one was for this Bowman person, but because she was also going to Miami, they were also taking their cruise from Miami, but I don't know. Oh, they stayed at a Holiday Inn Express and look, yeah, here's even more airplane flights. Fort Worth, Texas, Nathan and Fanny right there. Boom. October 13th. So you can see how those can line up. Here's another one. More tickets, Nathan and Fanny all there. And so, man, they were just traveling around together, going on cruise cruises. And here's the deposition. This is what they wanted. Deponent romantic relationship. They wanted videotaped with a court reporter sent over to Fanny. Now, what is this? Okay. So you see, uh, he was easily find that, you know, he had the whole affidavit with everything on it. Um, it's hard to come and say, well, they didn't do it when they have it. You know, me and my wife always say this little thing, like if people start just asking you stuff, they don't usually ask you unless they already know. So they ask you, so so where did y'all travel to? Did y'all go here? Did y'all go there? And then you sit and saying, well, I don't remember. I don't know. Oh, okay. So you don't remember going on a Caribbean cruise? You don't mean taking a flight down to Miami to get on this cruise? Uh, I, I don't, uh, I, uh, you know, no, that don't work. It doesn't work like that. Not when, and they trying to show that y'all using the money, all this extra money he's making. And you don't have nothing to show where you paid him back. You know, 
be like thirteen hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars, you know, a lot of money, two hundred ninety six dollars. You know, it's a lot of money. So you don't have no, you don't have no. Why you don't keep records of all this transaction and money? Why you guys don't keep records and see you're gonna have IRS at your ass now? Cause see, they probably sitting back like, okay, y'all talking about y'all keeping all this cash on hand, so something not getting reported. You see what I'm saying? You're letting too much in. Now you're going to have the whole world coming down in your business. And his too. He probably looking at like, yeah, we about to get audited. Yep, IRS about to be there. Yes, sir. Also on Friday, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners has launched an investigation into whether or not Willis acted improperly when she hired Wade. Wade filed for divorce in 2021 the day after he was appointed special prosecutor by the DA. Wade has earned upwards of $650,000 since he started working on the case. The attorney for one of Trump's co-defendants alleges that Willis benefited from the money Wade is making from Fulton County. And what happens next will be up to the judge overseeing the Trump case. If these allegations are true, could lead to a whole host of things that the DA doesn't want to happen. She could be removed from the case. She could be held to have a conflict of interest. The case could potentially be dismissed if it's so structurally unsound that it amounts to a violation of due process. Willis has been subpoenaed in Wade's divorce case, but says that she shouldn't have to be involved. There's a hearing in Cobb County Court Monday morning to make that decision. Okay, so now look at all this. You might end up, after two years, you may end up getting put off the case. But I wonder why they just can't take him off the case and, and resume, like bring somebody else in. I just, I don't know. But either way, if she get removed, I understand that I, that I heard, I'm not sure if this is true, that if she get removed, then her whole team gets removed and they had to put a whole new team there. So... That means they'll start over pretty much or it probably get canceled out, especially if Trump get in office. It's definitely get canceled out. But it'd be two years wasted. You know, I just don't think that um, personally going after an ex-president when he lost and all the stuff he was trying to do didn't work for him and going after him years, what, years, years over, like three, four years later, I don't think it's worth it. Because he's, he's not going to go to jail. I don't care what they say. He's going to get fined and all this. He's not going to go to jail. He's not. So, you know, now the wife subpoenaed you. You know, you're just going to stay in this mess. Like your character is really getting looked at and the man is married still. So, all I can say, people, be careful where you poop and eat. That's all I can say on this because you can end up like this. Well, guys, y'all let me know what y'all think about all this. Let me hear you in the comments. I know your lady's going to, oh, you're talking about a black woman and all this. I'm talking about a woman who just happened to be black. That's all it is, people. Pointing out the facts and the non-facts. So, it is what it is. So, y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe, like, share, and hit that notification bell for what? To get the next video. That will pop up here and there. So it's your boy once again. And I'm up out of here. Y'all stay vibing. Peace. I got to go hit the gym. You better go too. Alright, 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 alright.